uplift the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Put it in the pot, mix it with the grace. I ain't got no problems with since they pay. Jesus did it all, that's why I'm saved. No condemnation, my conscience clear So every time I pray I get results I just rest like I'm chilling on the couch Speak his words out my mouth and watch him work They them teachers in the church had to learn from her Shattered bottles on the sidewalk of my turf I'm just posted on the porch selling hard To the ones that he sent to me to build up through the faith Had to face reality when the indictments came my way Couldn't plead I was scared, man, I had to go to trial every day In the county, they came back with them jersey numbers And I don't want to be a part of that I'ma learn the word, let it work, bring me out of that Now I get calls from the homies in the joint I'ma holler back, got a couple homies in the joint They ain't coming back unless they take hold of the promise Jesus died for that, free but rabbits off a death row Plenty grace for that, Betty changed his life after that Two way sacrifice, I was in the trenches Gets the heartless, got a heart for that Now I'm I'm in the trenches with the blessing for the stop to that curse that's been operating in your life. Come up out of that. That's the gospel through the promise. Got the blessing back. So I ain't got a patty cake and push the bag to get it right. I just use my gifts to make a way. Call it grace life. I just use my gifts to show the way. Shining grace life. Put it in the pot. Mix it with the grace. I ain't got no problems with since they pay. Jesus did it all. That's why I'm saved. No condemnation. My conscience is clear, so every time I pray I get results. I just rest like I'm chilling on the couch. Speak his words out my mouth and watch him work. They don't teach us in the church, had to learn from her. Gotta walk in love to the ones that surround me. Even when I don't feel them and don't want them around me. That's the God kind of love, gotta get grounded. Can't be focused on my every thought, Satan talking. Can't be speaking on my every feeling, words of spirit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Listen, if we got differences, put them in the pot. Don't become a prisoner to unforgiveness, cause it rot the flesh. I just want the blessing, operating where I'm operating. That can only happen when I walk in love. Faith work by love, fear work by hate. I've been in that case before, suffocating on the low. I got enemies called demons that don't want to see me breathing. Wrestle not with flesh and blood, mostly been against the cuz since. 11, I was in the traffic in them drugs 12 is when I met the plug Gave my life to him Back and forth between the streets I ultimatum for the east Got a couple thoughts Get her in the cell I'ma choose Jesus Put it in the pot Mix it with the grace Then we had the faith This is what we call say I don't think about the past Put it on the cross Then I take a seat At the right hand of the boss Put it in the pot Mix it with the grace I ain't got no problems with since they pay. Jesus did it all, that's why I'm saved. No condemnation, my conscience is clear. So every time I pray, I get results. I just rest like I'm chilling on the couch. Speak his words out my mouth and watch him work. They don't teach us in the church, had to learn from her. Hey everybody, hey everybody. This is your host, Calvin Logan. The Logan Power Show. Nationwide, worldwide. Hey, it is a blessed time. It is August the 31st, 2019. God is good. I know he's good to me. I know he's good to you. We are excited. We are on a, a new level, new high. 
of just blessings that the Lord is just overshadowing us with. So I thank you all for listening to us. The number, again, for calling six four six five six four nine eight four two. The Logan Powers is on Elations Radio. Uh, we're making a difference. Um, go to the website today, www.thelogan.com. L O G A N P O W E R S H O W dot U S or you must have Logan Powell at gmail dot com. Before we get on our guests, we want to go into prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing both now and forever. We thank you, Father, right now that the doors are opening for us. We thank you for everyone who's listening in now and on the replay that their lives are being changed. And Father, we just thank you, Father, and praise you. What's going, what you're doing both now and forever. Holy Ghost, as I decrease your increase. And we thank you, Father, and pray you will be done both now and forever. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without, without further ado, he's a returning guest to the Logan Power Show. He was on fire, so I want to bring him back on. He's the one and only Mr. Kevin Thurston. How you doing, sir? Mr. Kevin, can you hear me? Hold on, y'all. We're going to make sure we get Mr. Kevin on the line. Yeah. Hold on a second. Hear me? Yes, sir. How's everything? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Glad to have you here. And be a Glad to be back. Got it. Yes, sir. Glad to have you here on the Logan Power Show. We're making it happen, sir. So without further ado, Tell people about your new network that you're all on, sir, and um, how can people get in contact with you? Sure. My name is Kevin Thornton. I am a life coach and a holistic health coach. I'm also a radio show host. I have a radio show by the call of the Wellness Architect Show, and the purpose of our show is to inspire, educate, and empower people to be the best version of themselves. You could go to watch the show on Mondays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., Every Monday, um, you go to www.statusnetwork.net backslash the Wellness Architect Show, and you can watch us online, online, or you can also get the app, and we also do Facebook Live as well. So uh, other than that, you can reach me on Facebook at Kevin Thornton or also the Wellness Architect, and also on Instagram at that Wellness Architect as well. Amen, Mr. Thornton. So we appreciate you again just for coming back to us. Um, so we want to talk about, like, you know, what's what's really going on. Um, I know you're a community activist. Um, mm-hmm. You want to see change in the community. You want to see us go to the next level. Um, mm-hmm. One thing I have, like, you know, I, I really want to debate a lot of things that's really going on is how we, just in general, we focus on things that are not really that important and not focus on the main main narrative. What I mean by that, 2019 here in November is an election year, not a presidential election, but there's senators that's in place. There's um, Mm -hmm. city council. There's mayors. Um, A lot of bills are going to be passed in 2019. Mm -hmm. And we're not really seeing – we're not really focusing on voting. We're not mm-hmm. focusing on the economy as a whole. I think a lot of people mm-hmm. um, miss the concept that they say, hey, the economy is going great. you got to ask yourself, is it going great, or are the numbers being sort of altered to make it look like it's great? Um, right. So I just want to get your, your actual, your personal take on it. And for those that listen to me right now, i got nothing against the economy being great. Nothing against as, at all. I have nothing against... Um, who's in office, but I know right from wrong. And I know that I know that we need change. And the reason why I'm right. saying that is that if you look at the stock market, oh man, Calvin, it's a lot of points. Yeah, I get that. But you got to look at where it started at. When the last administration left in office of where it is now. Yes, granted, it it has grown, but some things that we said that was you sort of like it gave a double standard. You said, okay, we're going to cut the debt. Mm-hmm. We well, didn't cut the debt. The debt has increased. 
Right. Yes, jobs did get, jobs did did create. Understandable. Um, you say that things are better for everybody, but I don't really see that. I don't go by. See, the unemployment numbers are kind of construed because that is someone files for unemployment where you actually get those kind of numbers. That's how they would actually know if it's going from there. But you don't talk about the people that are not even applying for a job. Right. The ones who say, I, I'm not even applying for a job. The ones who may be living off of somebody else's income. You're not talking right. about the ones who may be living an unrighteous lifestyle, maybe selling drugs, doing other things. Those That income is not is not factored in. None of those things right. are factored in. All you're factoring mm-hmm. is when someone does file for un- unemployment and does right. it, that's saying that's everybody. But that's not always the case because if people understand, unemployment means that it takes a while for it to kick in. It's got to be a certain reason why you got let go from that employer. And then mm-hmm. also it's got to be approved to get start getting the money. Otherwise, you ain't getting no money. So I just want to get your right. personal take on that. Um, first of all, thank you for having me on the show once again. Uh, for me, uh, I think we as a community got to do better about, you know, voting. Um, I think the only time we actually think about voting is when it's time to vote for the president. And that's cool and all, but the, the real time to vote is like now, when it's time to vote for local, state, um, city governments. Because those are the ones that put the uh, bills in place that truly affects us, and so those are the ones who make the laws in motion. You know, so you know if they're not doing things in your community that's benefiting you, you know, this is time to start putting, you know, to putting your your uh, your vote into action. And I don't think we take that seriously enough. Um, I remember when. Uh, we voted Barack Obama, President Obama in. We thought we did something because we voted him in, and which we did. But then when it was time for the election the following year to you know for re-election for government, we didn't vote. And then we didn't vote, and then the Republicans took over. And so, but then, so then with that, we still had this, this uh, expectation of what we felt this man supposed to have done for us, but yet we let him down by not voting so he'd keep the Democrats in because he now he the Republicans in there and they're not, they're going to give, they gave him the most trouble to try to get anything passed because their intentions was not to allow this black man to succeed. That was their intent. And so we have to do better by, you know, being more active in our community, being more active in voting because we can't not vote in all things and then complain about what's not being done for us. Um, so that's my, that's my first thought. Um, so what's the other part of the question you asked me? You... The other part was we talk about the economy as a whole. Yeah. And we about how we get, I guess we get mixed signals because we say we want, we want to see change. Right, and we and we and we pretty much what we do a lot. We try to we get caught up in nonsense is what I look at it. A lot of it is mm-hmm. nonsense stuff that we right. put our focus in. We worry right. about the wrong stuff. We get really deep on social media, but we're not mm-hmm. really seeing the big picture. Like you know, you can say all day long that um, that hey, I'm I'm about change. Everyone can claim it. You can name it. You can claim it all day long. But right. a lot of us, we're not really about that life of change. We talk a big game, but no. I don't think we're, okay. really, we're really about that life of change. No. Okay. So, okay. First of all, uh, I let's go with the whole Popeye's chicken sandwich. Yeah. We have made we have made Popeye's a killer. Why couldn't we use that same power to promote a black owned business? Because they you know, from what they said on the news, black Twitter had their own blaze and you know, the power of black Twitter had people going to Popeyes to try this chicken. 
we got all kind of black business out here that, you know, can use that same money that we gave to Popeye's. That could have been to, it's, it's a part of mom and pop chicken um, chain that we could have promoted and let them get income. You know, we could have been promoting your show or, you know, or something to where that, that money is generated and brought back into our community. Because at some point in time, we can't be, we as a community got to stop waiting for them to supply us with the what, what we need. And we got to you know, come into the community and start keeping our money in our community. And, and, and we got to look at it from, I, I think I said on my show one time, the dollar lasts in a Jewish community for 39 days. A dollar stays in the Asian community for 19 days. Now, dollar stays in our community six hours. Six hours. Wow. So we have to do better by let's keep our money in our community. And so, mm-hmm. you know, you know, like you said, the stock market, that's all cool and everything, but it's not a, it's not a true representation of us doing well. And we really pay attention to it. The economists are already saying that they see a recession hit about to come. So is you no know, the the economy is about to make a change. So if we, if this is if they what they say it's gonna be true, are we financially ready for it? That's the question. So I agree with you. I got you. I mean, you, you make a good point. You talked about you said you said something that was very pivotal. You talked about how the money doesn't turn. But how do you speak to people say like, you know, you hear this you hear the stereotype that when you think about a black owned business, you hear things mm-hmm. of not on time. Right, bad quality, customer service. Bad customer service and the quality is not always the best compared to quantity. How do you speak to those I looking at fake narratives. That's just me. But how do you speak to those people who consume? Because that's the part that I'm trying to figure out. Because I can, I always got a rebuttal to the people like that. But I just want to hear your point of view. Um, that could be a fact or an experience. However, we go to a white establishment and get bad experience, bad service, and we'll go right back to it. You know, we'll go. You know. We'll go and get mistreated at an establishment, and we'll go right back to it. But then if we go to our own establishment and we get bad service or we get mistreated, we're done. We're done. So you could say that in their experience could be true that they have bad customer service, but we have it, you have it over there as well. But do you skip – do you – you give the other community more than one chance. You don't give us you don't give us more than one chance. And then a lot of times for us, a lot of us, this we are like first generation a lot of times creating a business. So we learn it as we go. So then a lot of times it may be things that we may not be doing correctly, but if you don't tell us that, you know, we're not doing this correctly. If you don't tell us, we you know, hey, if you don't get your customer service intact, you're going to lose your business. You know, how can how can we how can we evolve? How can we grow? You know, and so that's 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 my thing. You know, we sure. have to give our com- our community the same chances that we give everybody else. You know. When they say they say my Tommy Hilfiger or somebody didn't make clothes for us, that didn't stop us. We still we still bought his clothes. We still bought his clothes, even though they say even if it's a urban a urban legend, if it was if it was true, we still bought his clothes. So that money could have went to a black owned designer, you know, but. I, you know, I think our expectations for 
our own community of how they treat us is higher than what our expectations for everybody see how they treat us. Because I, what was, because what's beyond me is that we'll go to a barbecue spot that's owned by Asians and buy barbecue from them, but not buy a barbecue from black owned barbecue spot. I don't understand. I don't understand how I, it. Right. I don't understand how women could go to an Asian owned like in Atlanta. You got all these Asian owned beauty supply stores. They're thriving. But then you have a black owned beauty supply store, they're suffering. And the majority of people who buy we, we and all that other kind of stuff is us. And we're not going to the black owned beauty supply store to support them. We we let uh, the ages come in and take over. I don't understand. For our culture. So that's stuff that you know, we want to do. I, I have a problem with that. I got you. I mean, you make you make the point, but I look at it like this. It's a slave mentality. Mm-hmm. You, got, you have to look at it's more of a slave mentality. It's a mindset. I mean, people... I mean, I tell people all the time, Calvin, you know, what are you talking about, the slave mindset? We, we, slavery was a long time ago. It ain't stopped. It's a, it's it a stopped. criminal. It's a, it's a mm-hmm. lot of slavery mentality. It's like this. I give an, I give a perfect example. Mm-hmm. When President Obama came in, came into play, people thought that's it. Mm-hmm. That should never happen. It should have been now it's time to kick off to the whole other level. Mm-hmm. Right? We mm-hmm. didn't really support it like it was. The voting was mm-hmm. there. But mm-hmm. you understand that the, the, the other portion was is that you had to have the right mindset people to last mm-hmm. the whole eight years. Absolutely. So the whole eight years were not all on the same page. You allowed mm-hmm. Others, like I give an example, and this is a true fact. Ain't nobody, anybody, anybody want to argue me this? I tell this, this the the data analysis. The owner will tell you this. The owner of Fox News, the Murdochs, they are mm-hmm. loyal Republicans, hands mm-hmm. down. Loyal Republicans. MSNBC or will you like that? They're loyal mm-hmm. Democrat. Hands. Down. CNN, Ted Turner, he's actually a Republican, but he's trying to play the fence a little bit. That's why you can't just watch one network. But what happens was, this is what happened. CNN reported, MSC reported one way. Fox reported another way. So now the tables have turned. Fox wants to be the savior. You always hear things, fake news, fake this. All right, well, cool. Everything is fake news. What's real, what's not? It's when reality hits. See, God is not really – see, I'm a, I'm a spiritual person. I know God is – God knows what right from wrong is. When people mm-hmm. say, like, you know, racism is gone, that spirit is left, you're either blind or right. you're clouded. Right. That it has left the building. That's like telling somebody that lying has left the building. It hasn't. Mm-hmm. It right. hasn't left the building. Mm-hmm. It has not left the building. I think like this. The reason why, Mr. Thornton, you would say mm-hmm. why people are not investing into this and, you know, to me at our show, I'm like we don't have, like, millions of people listening because we we, we pretty much, we change the narrative. Because we're not mm-hmm. negative all the time. Mm-hmm. See, people right. thrive off negativity because it's a mm-hmm. worldly system. You can't. That's the Bible talks about. You you you, you either can be hot or cold. You can't be lukewarm. If you want to be lukewarm, mm-hmm. then then put that negativity out there. Like if you want a show where you you throw a lot of negative, you talk bad about people, then join that show, and I guarantee you'll find some people who would have listened to that because. They feed off of that type of negativity. That's right. the whole thing. But when you come with real solutions, people don't want to hear mm-hmm. solutions. Because solution oh. stops things. I give an example. 
if, let's say me and you, Kevin, Calvin today has has the cure for AIDS, HIV, and cancer. Mm -hmm. I got it. I got the cure. Mm -hmm. First thing is, am I thinking about the payday or I'm thinking about the people? Mm -hmm. First thing you got to ask yourself. Yeah, right. because how you look, they could be like, oh, well, how did he get it? What makes him so special? Mm -hmm. Where did he go to get it? He must have got it from somewhere else. So the theory is the people, the pharmaceutical company is going to be like, well, let's try to knock his credibility down, put a, a mm -hmm. fear or a doubt out there that this is like mm -hmm. a not their 50-50. Now, mm -hmm. his community, that people that look like him, should be pushed to, hey, that would be the first ever he's going to change the game. So what he does is he changes his community. He gets the, get the pills to people like that that cure from AIDS, HIV, AIDS, cancer. So when you go into a hospital from the fourth, third, second, first floor, people that are full-blown cancer, HIV, AIDS are healed, and you have a whole discharge going on that particular day. All right, mm -hmm. so first thing you got to say to yourself, what's, what's going to be your price point? People going to be like, well, you know, he going to charge a million dollars. Nah, there's millions of people affected with AIDS, cancer, HIV. You charge people $1,000 per. You a mm -hmm. billionaire in churches out. We try to charge a mm -hmm. million dollars per person. Everybody can't afford it. It's all about the numbers. See, we got to understand, right. you, you got strength in numbers. You don't have a lot of leaders in our community like it used to be. It used to start with the church. That was your right. those were your pretty much leaders. And you say, Well Calvin, what are you talking about? When they say well civil rights. People always say like, you know, have the Martin Luther King type of mindset. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. If you got the Martin Luther King mindset then you ain't turn the other cheek all the time. Because Martin Luther King mm -hmm. changed his ways in certain things. It wasn't just a beat mm -hmm. down every time. People got afraid of numbers because people are scared mm -hmm. of numbers. Numbers right. change narratives. When you have numbers, you have power. You think about how many civil rights leaders have passed away, the ones who were game changers. I ain't talking about these ones who want to be on television. I'm talking about the ones who are game changers. These are people that look at the whole big picture. They're gone because they were alive today. A lot of things will be different in your community. Drugs is the drug game. The reason why the, the heavy drugs are not legal is because that would make the illegal realm lose a lot more money. Mm -hmm. That's plain and simple. Drugs are one of the biggest things. How you kill, this how, how you stop an African American or a Hispanic family you kill them in this ways. First, you stop from, you decrease marriages. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two, you limit financial gain of entrepreneurship. Make them a slave. Make them work nine to five and think about retirement, working 40 years, working on one job, so on and so forth. Bad. Don't think about entrepreneurship. Don't mm -hmm. think about housing, buying a house, investing, you know, property, building a future. Don't think about that. Another yep. thing, whatever's in his neighborhood is always, you got to have a hair salon, barbershop, that's going to keep yourself together. But you want to have no healthy grocery store, fruit stores, always food right. carts, things that will kill that person over time. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're going to have a spirituality because you, know, you can't stop the spiritual side. But Drug infested, I want that to be on a high time. What I mean by that is I don't want to be heavily infested with, with police protection. Nah, limited. To do that over a certain period of time and that thing festers, what happens? High divorce rate, more mm -hmm. single parents, more single mothers with no fathers in the, in the picture. Mm -hmm. No entrepreneurship. You always talk about businesses. Clean. Stop all the businesses that look like you. Kick them out. The, kick. Don't put, make the people that look like you in the area. When you have all that, that is how you have a messed situation. Then at, over time, the area is messed up. 
and that's how you have gentrification. That's it. Right. I agree with you. I agree with you. And one thing you said, too, about the, uh, you were saying how the people feel that racism is not gone. That's, that's not true. Because here's the thing. Uh, I read this book by Napoleon Hill called Outwit the Devil. So the devil is fear and negativity. So when President Obama got elected, the fear infected the white culture, especially the white men, because they did not want a black man to run their country and be their leader. So that fear, and then with President Obama becoming president, that changed the narrative of how we saw ourselves and what's truly possible. So now we can see that we can be president, and then we can be president. We can be anything. So then, therefore, they are okay with us, you know, being entertainers, athletes, that all those who are going to entertain you. They don't mind paying big money for you to entertain them. But they are, they're going to have a problem of you trying to lead and run the country. So they have to do something drastic, you know, completely opposite of what they did. So that's why the the, uh, the racist people came out in droves and voted this man in because he played to the narrative that they were speaking to, which is they did not no longer want the opportunity for a black man or a woman to come and take the lead over our country. And so they, that fear brought these people out. And so, you know, you've never seen these people until now because they're fear of us taking over. They, they're already fearful of that anyway because they already know that by 20, 2031, you know, it's going to be majority black and brown people. So they are already in fear that we're going to take over. And when we take over, it's going to be a change. So that's why they're doing everything they can possible to put the men in jail, you know, all the other kind of things to try to stop, you know, from us having more and more kids because they don't want us to take over. And that's part of their racist mentality because they don't want us to. We know, I will, I can't say we all know, we are greatness. They also know that we're greatness. But they also have planted a limited mindset in our in our heads for us not to really embrace our greatness. So if, if, if anything, I want us to know that we're great, embrace our greatness, and do what we need to do to build our communities up to be great and not ask for permission to be great. Amen, amen. Before we switch gears, Mr. Thornton, and get mm-hmm. uh, our other guest on, and definitely mm-hmm. want you to stay on the line with us, um, what do you want to see change? Because I want to tell people right now, we're not just talking about the racism and we're thinking about just, you know, all about black people. I want everyone to succeed. Mm-hmm. I definitely do. That's that's my mindset. Mm-hmm. But I have to be straightforward with people. If I want everyone to be great, right? Mm-hmm. But if people who look like me are at the bottom of, bottom of the dog on footstool. Mm-hmm. How can I want? How can I want everyone to be great, and I forget what people who look like me, and forget they? I want them to be great too. That's like sort of like a, um, I'm a hypocrite. I can't mm-hmm. preach and say like, man, I want you all get to the mountaintop. Right. But I see someone who looks like me, and I don't even address that there's an right. issue, and I try right. to make it sound like, well, you know. Hey, I'm thriving. I'm great. You ain't thriving. Something wrong. Right. Well, if you dig a little deeper in the situation, you'll find out the problem. So just want you to give, Mr. Mr. Thornton, before we get our next mm-hmm. guest on, just for food of thought, what do you want to see? How do you want America to be great? That's the question. Good question. Um, I think... For us to be great, I want for us to, for America to be great. 
um, I believe that for one, we, all of us, you know, I can for all of us are able to create the, the experience to be prosperous and abundant, not just one particular culture, but all of us to have have the opportunity to be prosperous and abundant. But also, you know, if we if we as a community say we're a Christian beliefs, or even if we, if not if it's not Christian, if you believe in higher power, period, then you know that God is love. So then, if that's what is true, then we all need to be living a more loving and more loving experience. So if we were living in a more loving environment, then all this negativity, we would not be embraced because that's not what God intends for us. So I want us to live, you know, if I see us being great, us as a country, white, black, Hispanic, uh, gays, all of us thriving, you know, spiritually, emotionally, and, you know, financially, living in the positive light of love. Amen. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Kevin Thornton. He's going to be on with us still, but we're going to change gears. I got another gentleman on. This is his first time here in the Logan's Power Show. Let's give him some love, y'all. The one on Mr. Jay Allen. What's going on, sir? Hey, man. I'm blessed. How you doing? Doing great. Glad to have you on. Good, good. Thank you. Pleasure to be here, man. Um, Man, I just, I'm excited. I, I was listening in just now, and um, I'm like, man. I got to come behind that. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh, no, uh, no, no. Kevin no, Thornton, no. man, uh, don't know you, man, but, you know, you were dropping some, some major gems, man. I was on mute listening, man, so very, very powerful Thank stuff. You. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Well, Mr. Mr. Allen, your, the floor is yours. Tell people who you are. Wait and, oh, and absolutely. talk about yourself. I, okay, sure thing. So, like you said, I, I am Jay Allen, um, you know, North Carolina native, born and raised there, currently living in Kansas City. Um, I'm a financial professional, been in the industry um, on, on the lending side for about 14 years now. Um, I own a company called Allen Financial Solutions, where we focus on financial literacy with the emphasis on credit restoration, you know, being the foundation. Um, also, own, I'm co-owner of Boss Hall Logistics LLC, which came about through a partnership between my uh, cousin and I, and which is also founded upon good credit practices because that's how we started the business. Uh, I love helping people. Uh, I love helping people be proactive. Um, I'm serious about personal development and encouraging others to to be better. Amen. All right. So we got. We got a financial guru on the line. That's what we ready to work, y'all. We ready to have fun. I told you the Logan Power Show. I'm going to educate you. I'm going to give you some love. I give you scriptures as well at the same time, but it's all love. So, Mr. Allen, things we always want to ask. Is having good credit, is that more important than more than having more finances? Because a lot of times we always hear the narrative, right? Um. Well, it doesn't make it doesn't make a difference having credit as far as you got the money, you are good. How do you speak to those individuals who don't really focus on good credit because you don't hear that in elementary, middle school, high school, maybe in college you may hear about having good credit. Right. The right. first three tiers of your education, you never hear about having good credit. How can you right, speak right. to those pitfalls to those people who are listening don't fall into that? Absolutely. So, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, you know, I've been a lender for 14 years. So I was, I'm was, i the person that you're coming to see you apply for stuff as well. So that's kind of – that's where I got my foundation and credit to understand the lending. And, and what I can tell you is this. Most people may have, you know, two grand laying around or, you know, most people don't even have $500 in savings. Right, so so having cash available is already a struggle. You need something to help leverage your buying power. And I can tell you now that you know, those who have limited cash can't just go out and buy a house with cash. Now, that's usually not what happens. You you have to have that credit. You have to have that wherewithal. Credit strictly means credibility. Uh, having 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 good credit is 
imperative because you're going to need it at some point, you know, either to apply for a job, to buy a house, to get an apartment. You need a car. Things happen all the time. You know, um, I had a situation where my car broke down. I, I just got my job in Nashville with my company, and my car broke down. I didn't have any cash saved. I spent all my money moving to the location. But luckily, I had good credit, and I was able to leverage my credit at the time to use the mechanics. Uh, they had like a Midas credit card. I was able to get my car fixed with, with credit, um, even with my job. You know, I had gone through the entire – I interned for a summer. Uh, I went through three interviews, right? I even had my drug test done and everything, even got my offer letter. They said, wait, before you are officially an employee, we got to pull your credit. So what if I wouldn't have good credit? Mm. You know, life happens to all of us. And I, I think that obviously having the cash is probably going to be your, your first source. But if you don't have cash, then you need the credit. Um, even some of my, my, uh, my clients, you know, in the lending industry, um, we offer what's called a commercial car. And these are people who are, uh, well, let me give you the background. I work for Caterpillar Financial. So we're like the bank mm. of Caterpillar, and we have a lot of people who come in who need repairs and stuff. So they, they break a machine. And these are huge machines. I mean, these machines cost anywhere from twenty grand to $6 million a piece based on the size mm. of the machine. Well, you know, they will come to me, and, and they would need credit to fix the machine. They need a loan for me, which is a secure lender, right? And they, I would put in their credit, and they didn't have any credit on file. They were what we call credit invisible. Mm. And they would always tell me, hey, man, I pay cash to everything. Well, that's great, but you paying two grand to a tire shop, and then you need 40 grand for me, and there's nothing I can do for you. I can only give you, lend to you based on what I see in your past. And if your wow. highest limit of credit is two grand, and then you need 40 grand from me, there's nothing I can do for you. I can give you maybe five, but it's not helping you move your business along. So then they see instantly how important credit is, but it was too late. So I tell people on this side of the business, on the credit repair side of the business, let's be proactive. Let, help me help you be prepared for somebody like me in the future. Because at some point, you're going to come across somebody like me who's looking at your credit profile, and they they have no idea who you are as a person. And you have to be prepared to understand how your decisions affect how they look at you going forward. Mm, wow, that's, that's getting deep. And he was saying, Cal, what are you talking about, man? What are you, what, you know, he's tripping. Mr. Allen is tripping. Okay, let's get even to a bigger aspect. He's talking about 20000 to $6 million. Let's, 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 let's hear what he said. He said 20000 to $6 million. That right, he, that's right. what he loans out. So let's talk about this. You ever watch sports, right? NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball. If you're an right. owner of a team, right, let's be honest. You got to have at least minimum $250 plus million dollars to even be considered to be part of the group to say I'm right. coming in with stuff. Right. Next thing you know, some people don't have the money. Like when Jerry Jones built Cowboy Stadium for $1.3 billion, did it come out of Jerry's pocket for one point three billion? No. He had nope. to show nope. he had to get a loan. And getting that loan, he had to have good credit. And getting yep. good credit means he had to show like, hey, we making X, Y, and Z dollars, we bring in this amount of amount of money. If you pay me, I'm gonna pay you back. That's how much I make. So yeah, Jerry bought borrowed one point three billion off Cowboy Stadium. But he's already made that and some back because he took that loan and he ran with it. That's the whole thing yes. about your credit building aspect. It's like, so how do you talk to Mr. Allen? Like me, I have a daughter, right? She's in seventh grade. I got a son yes, who's in fourth grade, another son who's in kindergarten. How can I help them build credit? So when it's time to have their business or expand from this in the Logan Power Show and say, hey, you know, Daddy, we're going 
to do big things. How can I have it to where they're together so when they come to you, they're straight at a young age and they don't have to wait so right. long in the game before they come to you. How can we help them now? Absolutely. That, that's a great question. Um, the, the first thing I think you do is educate them now. You know, kids, kids never sit down and they can they can use iPhones at age two. I mean, my, my niece is like two and she uses the iPad like she's you know, 20. So they have the, the ability to learn at an early age, which is not teaching the right thing. They can, they can memorize songs. You know, they can memorize all this stuff that really adds no value. I would start with education, you know, breaking it down to them, telling them what, what, what FICO is, breaking down credit. You know, credit means credibility, you know, your ability to pay people back. I would tell them, you know, payment history is, is 35% of your FICO score because that, that, that gives them a number. So the way I break it down to kids or anybody else, I describe FICO as a test, and you get 100 points as an A. And we've all been through that system. I make it very familiar to them. We've all been through the school system, and an A is, a, is, a, is 100, and a 90 is a, is a B, or however you went through that process growing up. And I said, listen, 35% or 35 points of, ex- of exposure is payment history. And if, if you get that wrong, you just lost 35 points. Then what's your test grade? Got a D six or F, <laughs> you know. And then I tell them, hey, thirty percent of your uh, of your uh, FICO score is amounts owed on credit cards. So if you if you if you're someone who has slow pay history and you're maxing out credit cards to to get between your checks, you just lost sixty five points on this test. Wow, you failed. That's those two chunks alone. And unfortunately, Calvin, a lot of people fall in that category. They, they're, they're paying slow, and they're using the credit cards to live life and not leverage. That's not what they're made for. Credit cards are a great tool. As a matter of fact, FICO wants you to have three or four credit cards on file to truly maximize your FICO score. So the first piece, Calvin, is education, you know, showing them the importance mm-hmm. of it, taking, taking them with you to your meetings. So I'm not sure what kind of – of the business you're involved in, but if you're in real estate, if you're going to the bank, if you're buying a car, let them be a part of that process and understand what is happening and, and why it's important to be prepared for that. And then I'll add them it's authorized user on your credit card. It, mm. Obviously, as long as you're paying well, too, you know, if you're paying well, too, then I would definitely add them as an authorized user. And that's how I got started. My aunt put me on, on her credit when I was like 18 years old because and that's important because 10% of your credit score, I'm sorry, uh, 15% of your credit score is credit length. How long have you had credit? And it's the average of credit on, on file. Wow. So starting now, out ladies, early and as authorized user, yeah, it's start, start building that way too. Wow. Now, now, Mr. Allen, what you just said right now, I'm telling you this point in time, that right there is almost hundreds of dollars of information. If people are listening to me right now, he just gave you hundreds of dollars of information that ain't nobody going to tell you unless you go to a seminar, a class, to learn this stuff. And I would even go further, That's why I, I would also say, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut you off, bud. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, would go ahead. Say, I would say, you know, being that they're kids, open up the LLC. Put it put it in their in, in their name, and then start building business credit also. That way, when they get wow. of age, man, they got options, man. They got options. They're a business owner already. Wow, man, you you speaking some blessing nuggets right now. You got me. You got me because I'm excited. My daughter, we just started a business with her, um, so I'm working the particulars out for behind the scenes for like, you know, um, I got the logo for, I got the email address that I'm working out, but I'm trying to get the, um, when I get the tax ID, all that information, I'm going to get it under her social security number because I don't know about y'all, but your kids got to grow. And this stuff he's telling you right now on the line is going to help you to get to the next level. And I want you to understand this, you know, I'll give another example to y'all. 
perfect example, but it's well needed. We understand our president as a Donald Trump. However you can say it, I know his, you would say how he administrated stuff. Definitely, I wouldn't give him an A. There's some, definitely some, some flaws there. But when it comes to business and getting money, that man knows what he's doing. Now, I don't know about y'all, but his first loan was his dad for a million dollars. He took that million dollars and he ran with it. Now, when people say, oh, man, he's a business genius, all right, well, if you read his book, if you read his book and and read certain things for it, then you would know that he filed for Chapter 11 four or five times, four or five times with his business. What that means is the business was going to be tank, change the name for it in business, but he was able to still go to the bank and get a loan because of how his credit was and his relationship with the bank. And some of y'all file bankruptcy right now. Ain't no bank going to give it. You couldn't even talk to Mr. Allen right now. You couldn't even come to him if you file for bankruptcy and be like, well, hey, I'm, I'm blow drug off the street. Can you give me $6 million? And he pulls your credit score, and he'd be like, well, bro, you just filed bankruptcy. You ain't got no history like you just said. But there are people that know how to play this game right. Because it's a game. This this loan game, this credit game, it's all a game. It's like a chess piece. You know how to play chess. When you know how to play chess, you'll win every time. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Um. Now, Mr. Allen, you got, you got a ton of knowledge. And one thing I got to ask, which is kind of things that's always wrapping my mind, okay, the statistics shows, based off the math, African Americans are the number one consumer. Right? Right. Okay. So, but when it comes to the lending game, getting money, yeah. starting a right. business, where you know, this money getting pushed out. We're the number one consumer. Now we don't invest and buy from each other. You see a lot of times and I see that the Asian community, Jewish community they get loans like snapping their fingers quicker than you see a lot of African Americans. Now, maybe I'm wrong about it because I know you see a lot of things differently, but am I hitting home and saying that's what you see on a constant basis through business since you're on the investment side and deal with customers a little bit different on your end? Yes. Um, a lot of my clients are African American. Um, on, on the credit repair space. Um, and the one thing that I do with my clients um, is I talk to them first because I want to understand the situation because everybody doesn't need credit restoration. Some people just need more credit and some people just need to understand how to leverage what they already have or even build it further. So I don't just put everybody on my program and sign them up. Um, now we offer more than credit repairs. I think it's a good idea to get moving with us, mm-hmm. but but in terms of, of spending, I have found that in conversation, people get real with themselves over the phone with me because I keep everything confidential. A lot of times it's, it's, it's their spending and lack of investing in the right things. And by the right things, I'm not necessarily talking about real estate or investments. I just mean time. You know, they're spending their time in places, they're spending money in places that adds no value. You know, when I talk about things like, hey, seminars and books, it's like, well, you know, that's not really what I was looking to do. I kind of want to, you know, that's, that's where it all started for me was, was investing my time differently. And that changed my entire spending habits because a part of my business, Calvin, is that I, I turned my mess into my message. Um, mm. Budgeting wasn't always priority to me. And I often had more month than money. And that's why I started leveraging credit cards and, and, and maxing them out. And unfortunately, the people I talk to now on the phone, they, they're having the same, some of the same problems, some of the same challenges. 
And that's why I'm able to relate to them because I've been there. They may assume because of where I am now, I never experienced that before. No, I was, I was definitely using credit cards for the wrong thing at one point in my yeah. life. And unfortunately, yes, I, I hate. I agree with you. We are more of a consumer mindset. You know, um, I encourage my friends to change their environment. You know, you can we can only go as far as our mindset goes. And I've invested time and money this year, especially going to seminars, going to conferences, to hear different conversations, um, to be exposed to different ways of thinking. And, and, and that's, mm. that's what has really been the biggest piece of growth in my life this year is that exposure. I mentioned earlier about the trucking business. Um, that came about just being exposed, being in the right environments. I kept hearing this, this conversation about trucking trucking, trucking, and the, the cost to get started wasn't even that much, and I had the cash, mm. like, you said, well, like you said earlier though, why use my mm. cash? I, I have good credit, so I leveraged that credit to start the business, and now that business, that that asset is paying for my liabilities. Wow. You're speaking the truth, and um, for those that listen to me right now, he said he turned his mess into his message. That's a that's a powerful situation. You say, well, Calvin, what are you talking about? Because when you turn your mess into your message, that means you have to tell people where you were and tell on yourself. So that means that brings shame. But the Bible says, "I will for your shame, I'll give you double. So that's what happened to that man of God. He just pretty much turned his shame into double. He, uh, he he learned how to take his mess into his message. Means that I'm going to preach how to get out of this hole that you're in. And listen listen to me. Everyone who's listening to me right now, these men of God right here are blessing my soul because I want to get better. I definitely want to. The thing about it is, is that um, I never want to be a person that you have all the knowledge but you never apply it to your own life. I never want to be that kind of person. I want to be like when you hear my recordings and all these men of God and women of God who come on this show and speak, um, they have their own platform. Like these pe- these gentlemen who I'm speaking that are on this line here, they got power. I'm not just saying that just to be playing around with, but these are this conversation that we're having Within this hour, whoever's listening to me, listen to us right now, this is going to change your life. I don't care what anybody else says. I'm just being straightforward with you. You're not going to catch us on a radio show. You're not going to catch us on television. You're not going to catch this sometimes on social media because these conversations we're not really having. We don't know how to fellowship no more. You can't have a conversation to talk for like, you know, just have a conversation, you know, shoot. We call shoot the fat. You know, figure out what's going on. You know, people pay for conversations. Oh, Calvin, you, you lying. Okay, cool. Warren Buffett has a thing each year that you pay to sit down and have lunch with him. He has an auction to sit down just to eat with him. And people pay thousands and millions of dollars to sit down to have lunch. Some of us won't sit down with people for two minutes just to have a conversation. You wonder why Jay Z blew up? At the lunch conversation with Warren Buffett from years back, paid a million dollars. That million dollar show paid off. I'm just saying, show did pay off for him. Uh, we're not, it might not be world. It could be your pastor, your apostle. could be your friend who, who's ahead of the game. You know, give Mr. Allen a call. Give Mr. Thornton a call. You know, these people who got it, who have knowledge that's going to bless your soul, that's really going to help you because you're going to have to, Pay for that time or sacrifice that time and say, hey, when are you free? 
let me holler at you for a second. These are the type of things we want to do to help those. So, um, Mr. Allen, how can people get in contact with you, sir? Yes, sir. They can reach me um, directly on my cell phone at 913-553-8492. I'm on Facebook at J. Allen, J-A-Y-A-L-L-E-N. I'm also on Instagram at at J-A-Y-A-L-L-E-N. 83 Allen as well. Amen. Amen. Mr. Thorpe, are you still in the line with me? Yes, sir. Gotcha. Well, gentlemen, I want to personally um, thank you. Mr. Thorpe, how can people get in contact with you, sir? Sure. Uh, they can reach me on Facebook at Kevin Thornton or also on Facebook at The Wellness Architect. Um, they can also reach me on Instagram at The Wellness Architect as well. Amen. Well, gentlemen, um, I know um, I thank you for this coming on. Um, I love to talk to you guys more about the ideas I have. Um, let's take it to another level. And definitely, I always want to to say that you, you guys got something. Go ahead. Mr. Cal, before you go, before you go um, I want to reach out to Jay. I asked Jay to hit me up on social media because I would like to have him on my show one day. One day soon. Oh man, okay, awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. You're welcome. Amen. Yes, Mr. Mr. J, you're gonna love Mr. Thornton's platform. What he has, I was okay. blessed to be honored to be on it. Um, he asked a lot of those hard questions, um, just like we're asking now. But I definitely want to give you guys an, an opportunity for platform to do your own television show. Things will be on TV with me. That's what I really want to do. Um, because what we don't do is we don't give those type of shows that's going to change someone's life. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it. I believe we need to have, you know, male. I like to say, I I'm not a gender bias. I'm just saying like this: these gentlemen are, are powerful. The women I've had on my show, powerful. I'm just giving these gentlemen an opportunity. Hey, you guys have my number. I'd like to talk to you offline about opportunities to start your own. TV broadcast that mm-hmm. you can put your stuff on television because I believe that people need to hear that. These simple classes, it ain't got to be no five hours, 25, 30 minutes just talking about what we need to have these strong conversations. You know, these are the conversations we need to have in our community. You know, um, social injustice issues with real solutions better building our credit, telling our kids what they need to do, tell the hard conversations we need to have. When we have that, I promise you, you will change lives. Because both of you men are pastors. I don't care what you say, but both of you have pastoral <laughs> mantles on you. And I don't care what anybody says. But see, I, I promise you, see, a real church, a real church will say, you know what, let me bring Pastor Thornton, Pastor Allen in, they're going to be 100 with you. They'll keep it real, and they'll keep the scriptures going with you. They're going to say, you know, this is where we are. You are literally, I'm going to tell on you, your credit is bad. Now, how God going to bless you if your credit is bad? Or how God going to bless you if you don't you do not do the basics or you, you're you blind to stuff? You can't do better. You know, let's be honest. You know, tithes and offering, that's a powerful tool. I believe it. God, you know, that opens a lot of doors. When the Bible says, you know, do not rob God, put tithes and offering. I open the windows of heaven, bless that poor bless that you're up to receive it. God did not say that he's going to open up heaven and a million dollars going to drop down from the sky, hit your doorstep, and going to be a cash made million dollars. That's not what the Bible says. That's totally ludicrous, and any pastor who teaches that, that that's, that's a fallacy. What God means by that is by when you do tithes and offering. That means he's going to open your mind to things that download to you ideas, inventions. Mr. Allen has said he had to change his mindset. He said he had to go and invest his money to something else. Mr. Thornton talks about books and how God opened doors for him to start his own show that he's on. He's on a network right now, and he's having these hard conversations. So these are pastors. They just don't have no titles. And that's the problem. We got some people who are 
pastors, but they ain't really doing the power. But you want people who got the power and not looking for the title. So y'all think about that when I'm telling y'all, let the Lord <laughs> lead on your hearts. I ain't, and like I said, I ain't pushing you to it. I'm just saying what I'm hearing, you gentlemen have pastoral mantles on you, and you can really change the youth because the youth need to have those hard, down-to-earth conversations where it's just, man, I'm just keeping 100 with you. This is what it is. You're either going to change or you're not going to change. Like if Mr. Allen came in and said, you know what, let's have a closed-door session, turn all the phones off. Hey, let's run your credit. Let's see what's going on. Hey, this is where you are. It can change. Let's keep it real. Be honest with yourself. What are you doing wrong? Okay, cool. Change that. Sacrifice. Boom. Restore to my wellness architect. Change your change how you talk, you eat, get your mind right. Those type of mm. things. We don't have these conversations in our community because we are afraid of what the backlash is gonna be. Well, I wanna eat how I wanna eat. Okay. So if you wanna eat how you wanna eat, you're gonna die at an early age. Because you can't eat right. what you want to eat. If your credit is jacked, let me tell you how it's gonna go, ladies and gentlemen. Your credit is jacked. That means you're not even thinking about life insurance policy. You ain't, that ain't even mm. cross your head. <clears throat> so when you dead, the family is fighting over something that they can't do. The creditors, the real creditors, some of the real ones, <laughs> that is the real ones, the one you owe the car thing, they don't repossess the car. Now the house, mm-hmm. eh, they don't repossess at the house and let you pay in for that. Or got insurance to keep that note going or that mortgage paid. No life insurance policy. You ain't got a casket. Brother, so when you die, you had a family who wants to be real dumb and they want to pay twenty or thirty thousand dollars for a casket and had all this entourage with these police escort, all these flowers, all this stuff as a dead person, but don't want to put it back into the house to live. That is the backwards mindset I've ever seen in my life. Person's dead. Their spirit is gone. That's a body. Get them a casket, put them in it, move forward. If you want something great, that's fine, but invest into it. Calvin, what are you talking about? Read in Genesis about Abraham. Abraham bought the land to bury his family in. You can buy your casket and invest it now if you really want to. Get your will in, in place. It's how I want it. I don't want nobody crying. I got the money set. The money is set for this. Okay, cool. Don't be foolish. I got a lawyer going to hand it all out. Yes, the credit has then been done. Yes, you got this business. Yes, start this business. Do that. You know, hey, hook up with this person. I don't trust that person. Don't bring him to the, to the funeral. That kind of stuff. Our society got to change. I'm going to talk about African Americans and Hispanics in my neighborhood who look like me. So <laughs> Mr. Me and Mr. Allen and Mr. Thor can all relate. Hey, we know we're in an epidemic. The male species is under fire. We are under fire. You can say all what you want, but the male is dying at a rapid rate. And the African American and Hispanic male, that's even a faster rate. <laughs> faster rate. And people like this is on the line, they don't want these people talking because they got too much power and they can change the game. So I hope that blessed y'all gentlemen what we were saying and that made some sense. Yes, sir. I, I, yeah, you, everything I was thinking about saying, man, I I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just put this thing down, Calvin. Um, I receive all that, man. Do you mind if I give your, your listeners a, a couple of books to uh, sure, absolutely to, to get? So sure. the three books I tell my clients to go get, and some do and some don't. That's a whole different conversation. The first one is, and not not in any particular order, um, Credit is King. Credit is King is a book that breaks down credit from start to finish. It outlines how to build it, how to fix it, how to build business credit as well, and why it's important. By Will Roundtree. A brother out of uh, 
I think out of Vegas he is. And then his his business partner, who was Mr. Jay Morrison, wrote a book called Lord of My Land, Five Steps to Home Ownership. I wish I would have this book 10 years ago. This book breaks right. down home ownership from start to finish, how to get prepared in advance for that process. Because that because the dream home can be a nightmare house if you're not prepared. All right. And Jay Morrison is well known as well. Um, that's a good one. And then Secure the Bag. This is by Rob Wilson. Secure the Bag. Rob is a financial advisor. Uh, some say to the stars, but he, he breaks things down in a way that anybody can get it. Um, he talks about everything from trust, living will and trust, budgeting, how to automate those practices. Uh, he talks a lot about, you know, how to get paid like MVP, you know, at your current job, how to create other sources of income, how to invest. He breaks it down from start to finish because a lot of people come to me asking about investing in stocks and they got bad credit. Now, listen, you are backwards. You shouldn't even, you shouldn't even talk about stocks. You, you need to figure out how to build the foundation first. So mm-hmm. those, those three books have, have really blessed me, and those are the top three books I tell everybody to, uh, to go get. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to really round you out. So Credit is King by Will Rountree, Lord of My Land by Jay Morrison, and Security Bag by Rob Wilson. Amen. We we moving y'all. We moving you, Mr. Thornton. Any books? Anything? Last thoughts. Uh, good question. Um, for me, uh, what I would recommend is two books by Napoleon Hill, which is uh, Think and Grow Rich, and also uh, Outwitting the Devil. So Outwitting the Devil is pretty much about mindset and understanding that everything is based on fear and negativity. So if we change our mindset and get out of fear and a negative mindset, then we can create abundant life, you know, in our physical, spiritual, and financial life. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm gonna give y'all two books. It's going like I said, I I can get the spiritual side. These gentlemen talking about the the the, the actual natural people. Um mm-hmm. Apostle Dr. Price's book is called Race religion and racism you read that book i promise you you'll look different than you ever thought before as an african-american male or hispanic when it comes to the bible biblically that the bible talks more about how african-americans are more in the bible than ever and jesus was not white and God was not white. And break down every religion from Buddha, Muslim, Hindu, everything. Breaks it all down and explains they have ends to them that you may not even know that these ends are detrimental. I'm talking to people who are spiritual now who believe Jesus Christ your Lord and say, if you believe that, if you do believe the Bible. The Bible is the oldest book. The Quran, you can definitely say it's on the same level. What it changes is the New Testament. Because they say the New Testament is total opposite of what we read in the in the Holy Bible. Yes, I understand about King James. Totally get that. Totally get this. But the Bible is real. There are scientific factors that factor in to the Bible. You can't take my word for it, but if you read Race, Religion, and Races by uh, Apostle, I mean, Pastor K, uh, Frederick K. C. Price, I promise you, you read that book, you'll start thinking low of yourself of who you are if you're an African-American male or Hispanic. Listen to me, all my Caucasian brothers and sisters, I love you. I'm just saying, I'm just speaking to my group who's, who a lot of times feel that they're inferior, inferior but I'm just speaking the truth. If you read that book, you can buy the DVD series. It's a couple hundred dollars. It's worth the investment. Yes, that that book and that series, promise you, I promise you, you look at everything differently. Another book, you know, read your Bible. But I just, you can listen, you can start from Genesis to Revelation, 
by the time you read Genesis, you would say, man, there was a lot of investing going on from Genesis, a lot of getting your life right, and when we get into it, like if you read the whole Bible all the way through from front to back, now it's going to take some time to read the Bible if you were, if you was a reader. Let's be honest now. Don't make it sound like, man, I can read the Bible in one day. All right, Doc, if you read the Bible in one day, you're a strong reader. You're the strongest reader who I've ever met in my life. That's 66 chapters over 1,500 pages. If you can read that in a day, hats off to you. But let's be honest. A real reader, it's going to take a couple months to read the Bible. But if you read the Bible from front to back, just the King James, you go to message translation, anything you read, I promise you, read the Bible, know it for yourself. Don't let, don't be so caught up in Sunday and Bible study and think you're going to go to heaven that way. You got to live your heart right, plain and simple, and live your life through four scriptures. There's four, minimum of four. That's how I look at it. Don't be the kind of person that say, you know what, I'm a believer, but you don't live it. That's the thing. I live by four scriptures. Second Corinthians five verse seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. I believe that this show is going to be syndicated not just on radio and television, but I'm going to do movies, TV series, everything across the board. Hebrews eleven one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the things that are not seen. Hebrews eleven one, you know eleven and six. Now you got to seek God without faith. You know, you're not going to please him. Then Proverbs 3 and 5, trust the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. He should direct thy path. See, I trust God on a lot of different things. Now, i got to work on my trust because sometimes my flesh kicks in. i got to kill it. But let's be honest. When you say you trust God, you got to be careful what you say. Because in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life and the power of the tongue, may love it to eat the fruit thereof. When you say you trust God, he's going to see if you really trust him. So that's why we speak to Mr. Allen about your situation. I don't care who it is. I don't care how your credit score. If your credit score is at 300, you say it never will change, trust me, it will change. If you say you will never make it, listen to Mr. Thornton, your life will change. I promise you that. But I'm just letting you all know that book will help you and read the Bible for yourself. You can get any kind of spiritual books you want to have. There's like a book on prayer um, that my wife my wife got from Amazon. It's different type of prayers. It's prayers to read. Um, but that one. Um, and then there's another book that This Present Darkness, that book, is a book, and it just talks about a story, and it goes into – how this guy was trying to build a stronghold. My mother had me listen to reading this book a long time ago. He got the cassette <laughs> listening to it a long time ago. By, um, I think it's by Mr. Oral Roberts. It's, 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 it's an older book, light years old, but I'm just letting you all know, um, for me, I'm old school. Yeah, I'm a young guy, but my parents always told me have a 20th and 21st century lifestyle mindset, excuse me, and you will always live. And another thing is, too, if you're going to be successful, if you're in business, go always go on Forbes.com, Fortunes.com, follow the money. Go on CNN, and MSNBC, Fox, follow the money. I promise you this, follow the money. When you see the Federal Reserve, when they drop the interest rates, the reason why they're dropping it is because of two reasons. They need y'all spending again. They need you to spend. That's what they want Americans spending. They want you to spend money. They want you to be in high debt. They want that. They want that kind of – they want you to, to live big, ton of credit cards, get 20 of them, max them out. Go broke. Go to college. Go to this college that costs 80 grand a year. So what? You get a degree. We promise you, you'll get a great job when you graduate. That's what America tells you. That's the mindset. Watch the Federal Reserve. 
Watch that stock market, how it's going. At up and down levels, that ain't a good thing. It's not consistency. I'm telling you. Their loan officers are watching it every day. That's Remember, investors, they think years down the road. They ain't thinking about today. They're thinking about 10 years from now how that money going to look. That's why people are making money and losing money every day. Follow the stock market. Shoot. If you had invested in Google 20 years ago, when it was the private sector before it came public, shoot. Apple 20 years ago, shoot. You would never be working up a day in your life. You'd be a billionaire by now. Easy. Easy billionaire by now. Simple stuff. Trade market stuff, y'all. I tell you right now, buy your name. Cal, what are you talking about? Have you bought the website with your name on it? Calvin Logan. I bought that already. Dot com. CalvinLogan2nd.com. I bought that already. I renew it every year. Remember, you don't buy you. You want to start a, a company with your name on it? Can't do it because somebody bought it. Why you think? Why you think Disney's kicking their tail about Mickey Mouse all the time? Because they forgot to renew the copyright infringement for Mickey Mouse. That's why they always show the old school of Mickey Mouse, but never the new school because it's been copyright was lost. But hey, y'all, that's another class. I'm telling y'all, we be here all day laughing and joking. Again, I thank again my guest, Mr. Thornton. God bless you. Mr. Allen, God bless you. Gentlemen, thank we you. really appreciate thank you. Thank you. Do you mind, no thank problem. You. Do you mind if I pray for y'all before we exit? No sure. problem. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you right now. I'm going to lift them, Mr. Thor, Mr. Allen. Bless them, Father. Favor and Father, open doors for them right now. These are pastors. They're talking after your own heart. Father, this is the day that you have made me rejoice and be glad in it. Favor their business, favor their platform, Father. Nothing, him, nothing broken. I pray, Father, that within the next 90 days, that doors will open for them like no tomorrow. I claim, Father, that right now they're the head, not the tail. They're above and not beneath. They're the lender and not the follower. I pray, pray right now, Father, that right now you're putting people in their pathway that's going to elevate them to where you have them to go. They're walking their purpose, Father. They are not distracted, Father. They're not thrown off course. You are taking them up to the mountain of transfiguration, Father. They're going to see your light and your love, and we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, everybody, I thank you again for listening to the Logan Power Show nationwide, worldwide. We love you. We appreciate you. So into that day. Hey, we love you. It's Kimmy, Kimmy can't take us out. The Logan Power Show, nationwide, worldwide. Have a blessed night. <laughs>